Alrighty, hello everybody and welcome to the SFA Season 14 Week 4 Bear Cave Games. We've got a, another great stream going on for you guys. And this is the debut of a brand new microphone. So obviously, let me know if you can hear me And before we get started. Um, now this is a much more professional type of a microphone as well. Uh, so... Um, there's definitely going to pick up more background noise and stuff. Um, I don't know how to fix an echo. Um, I can turn down my volume, turn up. Um, so, uh, try, welcome in. Uh, but if you don't know what the SFA is, uh, it's an online dynasty ran through uh, Discord, Twitch, and YouTube. And uh, it's a great time, very in-depth. You can claim a team, you can... Uh, you can code or you can grab coordinators you can set the playbooks you can set the schemes you can recruit in the discord and then we also for fun have a fully functional sports book and a fully functional um stock market economy for you guys to make coins and earn recruiting rewards and other fun uh prizes so um check out any of the links in any of our descriptions or any of the links in the uh, twitch chat um mike sounds good thanks um and as always, uh, if you do watch live, you may run into some ads, so feel free to drop a Twitch Prime sub um, or, or follow the channel at least. Uh, you su help support us and then also help support our national champion who gets a trophy and some merch uh, from their school in the mail. Um, and uh, that is always brought to us by our friends over at Home Field, Home Field Apparel. Uh, really the best apparel brand out there and they are going crazy they're re they're releasing stuff left and right hey we got a gifted sub from cryo another one oh my god cryo you're insane um but um yeah check out home field use code sfa 15 percent off they're releasing a brand new i i don't know uh, i don't want to butcher the name but it's a wisconsin uh school the panthers uh wisconsin milwaukee tomorrow and then they're also releasing more unc and duke tomorrow so be on the lookout in the discord and uh and we will uh um yeah and and i'll post them to the discord as well and then obviously last plug here uh, if you want more sfa content check out our instagram i post daily media stuff over there simulated football association on insta and then also patreon if you want more content in terms of watch parties i do a weekly podcast all that fun stuff um, and then you can also, uh, you know, edit your players, uh, equipment. And then you can also, um, I'm going to start, uh, allowing you to get your full stat breakdown each week as well. Um, so check it out. Uh, but yeah, so for anybody who's just filing in, I have a brand new mic microphone. So let me know if it's a good volume, if I need to raise it, lower it, I can always move closer to my face or whatnot. Um, and then also let me know if like the other sounds are, an issue as you know me writing down you know timestamps for my highlight videos or typing on my keyboard it probably will uh pick it up so we'll we'll see i can always go back to the headset microphone if needed uh this was a gift i want to try it out um and i'm very excited about it so yeah let's get into some bear cave so how about today's results uh really the two that stood out to me was georgia getting thrashed by alabama it looks like alabama is back and then obviously Baylor going down to Oklahoma State. That was a shocker. I don't know how that's going to affect that Big 12 race. Um, big Bear Cave. Yeah, this is going to be a very fun, very big Bear Cave. Uh, Dyron throws to pick six and the game. <laughs> yeah. Um, sounds good. Last one break or just upgraded. Okay. All right. So obviously if you if this is your first bear cave stream the way we do it is uh the games that aren't game day the top 10 games we're gonna jump in sim to the end and if the game is close we'll actually watch the gameplay uh it's a lot of fun we do a lot of um of our uh, sports book betting and stuff on this um for coins so it's a great time so today we're actually gonna go start out in the sun belt uh so we're gonna take a trip down to our national championship contender last season georgia southern they found their way to the natty and then they lost to oklahoma they're two and one this year already beat georgia uh so we've got fau that is coach uh g-man or torn comic if you're here let me know heads or tails kick or just kick or receive and we're gonna go ahead and get started here folks another bear cave on its way and another gifted sub what the heck cryo
We, you, get, you, in, you know what? Zach's the worst person to give a sub to. You know why? Because he doesn't even want to be here. He doesn't want to even be on stream. So if you're betting on this game, it's a two-point spread for the road team for the Georgia Southern Eagles. The prop bet today is Trey Enners, the running back for Georgia Southern, over under rushing yards of 149.5. And then the, uh, oh, I did not get my screenshot for the lines. Let me go grab those real quick. I knew I was forgetting something, as always. Watching live is always fun because you, you, you listen to my unedited bits. But the over-under for this game is 54 and a half. So we'll see what happens here. Florida, Florida Atlantic is a kind of an underrated team, in my opinion. They got Cyrus Lloyd, the transfer from Tennessee. You've got a tricked-out defensive line with Angus Falk, the Missouri transfer. Um, they used to have Brian Arakpo. I don't know if he's still there. But let's get it going. Who's going to win the toss? It's j -Sow. All right. Welcome in, boxer. Good evening, everybody. It is a great day to be an SFA coach. As we start out here, first quarter, no score. And a quick one there for Florida Atlantic. So not much brewing here for Georgia Southern here on the road. They battle back. They get three points, but that's not much. The underbetters are loving this game. Only 10 points here in the first quarter. And Florida Atlantic goes up more. All right, here comes the Owls. 14 to 10 as we enter the final frame. Remember, we'll jump in at the two-minute mark if it remains a one-score game as Georgia Southern takes the lead. Isn't that typical of Georgia Southern? Don't lead the whole game, but here comes Florida Atlantic. They're not just going to keel over here. All right. So we're at the two-minute minute mark now. Down four. Can Georgia Southern get it done? They have the offense on the field. The man to watch. The running back, Trey Enters. He is an absolute monster. They're going to bring a blitz. It's a wide receiver screen. And they get that out. Georgia Southern doing well through the air today. Ron Griffin. They're going to hurry this one up. Minute 44. They have to have the touchdown. they got Peter Green as the man to take over for Josh Johnson. He's, he floats that to a wide-open man, Ryan Alexander. The man that made a ton of plays in that Clemson game in the Peach Bowl last year. So first and 10, we're inside the 35. They've yet to give it to Trey Enters on this drive. He's going out, and they're not going to give it to him here as we get another throw, this time to Sam Wright. There's a lot of the same core here on this offense, but um, obviously they lost their signal caller. Lost J.J. Young, the redshirt senior, at wide receiver. So, second and two inside the 30. They got to get a touchdown. Really counting on this defensive line from FAU to make a play here. That's what this defense is built on. As they're going to take off, and he escapes. That's Peter Green. He has some room. He stiffies one, and it gets brought down from behind. As that is Brian Arakpo. So, he did stick around this offseason as they enter the red zone. So, you got Arakpo on one side. You've got Angus Falk on the other. As we approach a minute here, still all three timeouts for both sides. Floats that out. That was risky, but Chris Hopkins brings it in. So Georgia Southern, they are driving here. Remember, they're a two-point favorite, so a touchdown hits the spread. We're still looking good on the under. Second and six. Here's a handoff to Trey Inners, and that's going to go... Oh, hold up. Ryan Rhodes. So did we get a Trey Inners injury? Oh, boy, that could be brutal here for Georgia Southern. Trey Enters is not in the game. Remember, we do have injuries on. You can get a sim injury as they bring him down. Ryan Rhodes not doing much as it's now fourth down. So game is on the line here for Georgia Southern. That left side looks crispy, but no Trey Enters. They probably can't run it here. They're going to have to throw it. Plenty of time to the end zone, and he finds his man. Touchdown, Ryan Alexander. He gives him the lead. So if this stands, Georgia Southern is going to barely cover. 
a dot from Peter Green. And Georgia Southern continues to prove everybody wrong, that everybody was saying this team was going to regress, not be nearly as good, but here they are again, defying all the odds, but they left a ton of time for Florida Atlantic as we get some pancakes there, and down he goes! He breaks a tackle up to the 40 from Nathan Williamson. So plenty of time here for Cyrus Lloyd, the SFA player. He has been tearing it up down at Florida Atlantic. This is obviously a team that doesn't get a lot of coverage in the media, so you may not know, but he has great numbers. Cyrus, he's yamming that one, and he throws that way out of bounds. As Brandon Dodds is in, so Cyrus Lloyd isn't in. Oh, no. Cyrus Lloyd potentially going down with an early injury. That completely changes the focus of this game. Florida, Florida Atlantic now might be cooked. Yeah, this is an injury bowl game. As they're dumping that one off, and it's tipped away. A beautiful play there by Jason Morris, the guy taken over for Co Simpson, who went to the draft. Beautiful tip away there. Now third and ten. They are in yam range, but would like to get in range for a field goal here. Third and ten. Delayed give here, and if you guys are... Uh, haven't checked out watch party yet make sure to watch that game there was some brilliant plays a couple of plays that we've never seen before so game on the line now they're 0 for 3 on the day on a fourth down can FAU keep it going they had the lead for the vast majority of this game gave it up in the fourth quarter they're gonna throw it picks up the blitz fires it a strike a nice conversion there So they're going to hurry it up now. 28 seconds left. They still have two timeouts in their back pocket. Time is ticking. Not sure why they aren't snapping it. Now they finally do. Picks up the blitz again. Fires it out wide. Can he get the first? No, he cuts back inside. Kevin Yates, I'm not sure what you were trying to do there. you got to either go for the first down or go out of bounds. You can't seek the contact there. So second and three now. 16 seconds left. Probably about 10 yards away from uh, fringe field goal range, depending on the kicker. Second and three, Dodds. They pick up the blitz again. He floats that out wide. He hits his man, turns up field. That's Yates. And he gets out of bounds. First down as well. Hurry it up here. Or no, they're going to run another play, it seems, as the clock did stop. So now they definitely are in field goal range. Are we going to get overtime here to start Bear Cave? Dodds, he has time, floats that again. They get about two and probably are going to attempt another play as that only took two seconds off the clock. No, so they bring out the field goal unit now and Georgia Southern is going to, uh, they are going to try to ice the kicker. So to send this game to OT, Florida Atlantic with the backup quarterback, it's about a 42-yarder, 41 and a half maybe from left hash. And it's no good! Coach G-Man is in shambles. They can't get it done. And that, folks, is why you recruit a kicker. A missed field goal to end the game. You hate to see it. So, now the... Uh, the Neal team coming on out. Victory formation. Georgia Southern is going to go to 3-1 and one on the year. An unbelievable start. Showing that they definitely can or should be uh, considered a threat in the group of five yet again. Cryo, I don't think you understand that uh, SFA reject level kickers would be these ones that miss. They would not be good players. The SFA kickers that, that I put in the classes are the ones that are actually good because you have to be a high overall. All these guys are like 60 to 70 overall. That's what a reject would give you. So 24 to 21, and the under does hit as we hit 45. Georgia Southern does cover... 
Now the question is, is Trey Inners, I, it's not looking good for the rushing line as he was out of the game, but did he have a great first half? Yeah, Jarkus has it good, dude. Willie Anderson catches passes, he punts, and he kicks. He's an ultimate player. He's what Sammy Baugh was supposed to be at ULM. Willie Anderson, learn the name. Love that guy. All right, let's check out. We got the scoring summary. So we had a long run. Trey Inners had a couple or had one touchdown here. So he played into the third quarter. But then they came back there in the fourth. So Florida Atlantic. So okay. So Cyrus Lloyd, he might have been questionable. I believe I he, he was injured for a week, um, a couple of weeks ago. And I thought it was only like a one-week thing, but he must have been questionable now. So Brandon Dodds got the start. And they played a brilliant game. Uh, ran it down their throat. They just couldn't quite finish it, obviously, when your kicker misses. It's a tough, tough pill to swallow. Brian Arakpo, Angus Falk combined for three TFLs. But John Stewart, the other guy, uh, did everything. Deflections. They had four total. No fumbles. And let me know. I, I, I feel like you're probably going to be able to hear my controller. Um, I have gain turned all the way down on the new microphone, but um, I might have to mess with some more settings. But let me know as Trey Enters only gets 79 yards today. So the under hits on that Bear Cave prop, if you decide to bet on that one. Ryan Alexander doing his thing. Got two touchdowns. Uh, the man who uh, pretty much beat Clemson. Trey Enners also got a touchdown on, uh, through the air. And he gave up a sack. And on defense, uh, Sh Sutton and Holmes, this uh, brilliant linebacker core, continues to shine. Malcolm Cope, only four tackles. They got four total sacks. And um, deflections, one from Morris. That's the one we saw. He also got a fumble uh, for us there. So that's going to do it for this game. Yeah, tweak something during warm-ups. Warm I'm pretty sure he's just questionable. And then, uh, as always, guys, I got to get my players of the game. Um, so we'll see if uh, if you guys can hear my keyboard here. Let me know if I need to adjust anything in terms of sound. Here, my typewriter keyboard <laughs> thing is super loud. All right, here we go. We're going to move on. So that was a great start to the week. As the next game we've got is <laughs> App State at Cincinnati. Uh, we've got Coach Zach completely dodging game day on this game that probably should have been game day. Cincinnati comes in as the four-point favorite. Um, I know Zach did. Uh, he's a Patreon user, so he did submit uniforms. So we're all white. Very icy today is the request. So let's take a look if we've got all whites available. Yes, we do. Very crispy indeed. And then let me know heads or tails, kick or receive for Coach Zach. The ultimate stream fraud is in action. And if you're betting on this game, the Bear Cave prop is Flynn Saunders rushing TDs today. So we know he can pass the ball. Can he rush the ball in for a TD? It's a decent line at plus 200, I would say. And then the over-under for this game is obviously going to be quite high at 62.5. And, and this honestly could be a preview of the AAC Championship later on this season. So we got tails and kick. Welcome in the Joker. Uh, if, you're, uh, if you're new around here, let me know which coach you are. Obviously, follow the stream. Check out the Discord. All right, so Cincinnati, they do have a loss already on the year. I don't remember off the top of my head who it was to. I know they beat Arkansas, though. This is a team that is definitely in the hunt for that G5 bid. And remember, folks, Keeley Radix, Zach's player he recruited but broke the promise for, transferred to Cincinnati. So Coach Beardcat trying to get his... Uh, Trying to get his revenge today and also be on the lookout for the Cincinnati defense. You got Ike Wishbone, the transfer from Arizona, a member of the Legion of Dread. So you got Tails and Kick coming from Zach. So we're not going to see Flynn Saunders first. 
And the real question is also, will that uh, that uh, featured parlay today hit as Zach is the only one to take it? As Cincinnati starts out with a touchdown, App State does respond. They get another quick one there. This is definitely supposed to be a high-scoring game. As here comes App State, two in a row, or maybe that's three unanswered. As Cincinnati adds one before half. So third quarter, can Cincinnati finally get a stop? No, they do not. Cincinnati falling behind as they go down 21. This could be a blowout. Oh, baby, App State is potentially here to stay at the top of the rankings as 49 to 14 now. Uh-oh, folks. We, I mean, is Cincinnati a fraud or was App State just very good this year? Flynn Saunders taking all of the hate and absolutely thumping this team. We'll see, can they finish it? Obviously, we're not gonna jump in when it's this close, as I think that the over on the points also barely hits. So interesting, so let's see how it shook out. So Keely Radick started out and Coley got three, four, three runs. Dickens got one, so that parlay does not hit. Dickens only gets one touchdown today. As Flynn Saunders didn't even really have to do much today. They got up uh, uh, by a ton early, it seems, and then they just ran the ball. Five touchdowns for Charles Coley. Unbelievable. I know Zach is going to be pissed about this these stat lines, but what a, uh, what a way to win. Proving that they can win in a variety of ways. So Flynn Saunders does not hit the, hit the touchdown or the rushing touchdown on defense. Uh, Xavier James, the transfer from Illinois. You got a pick from Underwood. A lot of TFLs today. They were dominant in the run defense. No sacks. They did have three interceptions, though. So just complete dominance here today. And in four additional ones, they got a fumble as well. This is just... And a, and a block. They got the perfect game today here. So Cincinnati, Keely Radix, not a great day today. You know, 57%. Remember, he's just a he's just a young guy, so um oof. As you've got now, touchdown here. Not a lot going on for this offense. And on defense, Ike Wishbone made five tackles. He did get an interception um on uh Flinney there. So SFA player and SFA player, P.N. Litton, the 5'5", 300-pounder, got himself a TFL. Deflections, we got three today. Harrison, the transfer from Baylor. And nothing doing elsewhere. So that's going to do it for this game. So that is a shocker. I definitely feel like a lot of people are going to shoot App State up in the rankings. They may now become the favorite in the group of five obviously this is a very very good american conference yet again it seems so uh, there's going to be a lot of teams at the end and and once again uh the favorite of the aac probably is the favorite to make the uh make the cfp so here this game is in the books so let's move on So next game on our list is Tennessee at Florida. This is one of those games that it comes around once in a blue moon and you gotta watch it. Dog water against Nick. So number eight, Tennessee, the fraudulent win on game day last week. And then Florida, a crazy come from behind win on a watch party last week. Going at it here. Um, Nick, let me know heads or tails, kick or receive. I know Nick wanted orange pants and then florida they wanted the homecoming so all right those work together so nine overall difference here uh this is a 12 point favorite for tennessee and if we can find the over under here doo -doo -doo. struggling to find my over under it is 46 and a half so honestly a very low over under or 11 overall sorry my on-stream math is bad and then uh your bear cave line is bishop more interceptions we throw over one and a half or under one and a half it's not been a good start for bishop more this year all right so nick said tails and kicks so let's get it going 
Dogwater versus Nick. Oh boy, the season nine coaches. Here we go. A lot of optimism for Florida fans after that come from behind win against a Stanford team that made the CFP last year. They're back in the swamp and we've got rain. You know what that means, folks. So can Tennessee prove everybody wrong if, uh, can, can they finally put together a full game? They've really only played about two good quarters in their last, in their first two games. All right, so what did, uh, what did Nick say? Tails and kick. All right, here we go, folks. All right, we're going to defend, and here we go. In the swamp, in the rain, Tennessee scores early, and this might be a bludgeoning, but no, the defense holding on for Florida after giving up an early touchdown. They're settling in. They add three. Oh, baby, 14-3 now for Florida. 17-3, oh, 24-3. Not a good second quarter at all as 31-38-3. Oh, dear, here it is. The Sim God stream fraud narrative lives as we're not even getting to get to see it. And this is both App State and Tennessee. Let me tell you guys, these guys in the Sim are good. But when you watch them live, they fold under the pressure. 45-3. to This one is over. The over hits alone for Tennessee. And uh, the Swamp is not cooking this week. As they put Malone in, the backup quarterbacks who get a fumble there. And that will do it. 48 to 3. So we had Beach, Toto Sucky, Des Stiffy, and then Edwards, Edwards, Stiffy, Beach. Yeah, that's just kind of how it goes. So Bishop Moore, four TDs, two interceptions. The over on the interception still hits, folks. The narrative still lives. He has, I believe he's now four and six in his TD splits, so we'll take that. He does get to 300 yards, though. Stiffy up over 150. Where was that last week? He gets two touchdowns, though. Edmund Edwards gets two TDs. Beach gets two TDs. And Jake Laxon not doing much. A lot of pancakes on defense. Sippins, Russian Dobinsky, all the guys making plays. Uh, a lot of tackles for loss. Uh, two sacks. Interceptions, no. But a lot of deflections here. Three from rushing off the edge. That's interesting. Force fumbles. They did get two and two recoveries here. And no touchdowns. On the other side, oh, baby. They had three different quarterbacks play today. So Johnson played, and then at the end, they just put in Malone and Wilson. Um, rushing. It just wasn't a good day on the offensive end, obviously. A lot of different people getting involved. And Archbishop get nine tackles, but, I mean, this is just a tough day. Four TFLs, no sacks. Did get the two picks. Shout out to these guys for keeping my narrative alive. And that will do it here from the Swamp. That is one of those games where, uh, like last year, where Tennessee just keeps scoring for no reason. So let me get my screenshot as always. All right, so as we move on here, We are now going to go over to Utah. So we're going across the country to a little Pac-12 action. One of my favorite teams and one of my favorite players in SFA history. You got Chad Blunt taking on Utah and Coach Moon, home of Tokamaha Pacarori, going with the All Blacks today from Patreon. Uh, let me know, kick or receive, Moon, if you are here. And let's see, is Utah for real? They've had a couple of close games against inferior opponents. Cal has blown out two opponents, and then they lost by... Uh, by 11 uh, to ECU week one. So they're still pretty good. So we'll see what happens here. And kick for Moon. And the um, the line today, will Kira Streaker, the number one recruit from this past season, score a touchdown today? And then the over-under of this game 
is survey says as I search my graphic here so the line is four for Utah and a 57 and a half over under for those of you betting at home here we go for Utah so if you do win do you want to kick or receive oh he just wants to kick it yeah I'm dumb never mind me <laughs> So can Tokamaha Pakarori carry this team yet again to another win? And judging by that uh, Arizona game, I don't know if you guys saw, but Arizona got taken to double OT with Northern Illinois. They did get the win, but definitely looking a little weak. So if Utah can win this game, they're definitely going to be the favorites in the division. So three points for Blunt to start the game. They add a touchdown. Utah doesn't score. Looks like they are about to, and they do. So you head to the second quarter. Cal adds another one, and this is a team where they score a lot, and Utah typically doesn't score much, and uh, this one, oh no, come on Utah, battle back, get a stop, there you go, so we enter the fourth quarter, all hope is not lost as they throw an interception, no Cal, don't do this to Utah, we get a long touchdown, all right, here we go, all right, we're gonna, when it gets close at the end, we're gonna go one play at a time here, so we're simming, Fourth and one, and they get it. Can they add one? Can they get close? We're about, and they do. All right, so we're back within a score. We're not at the, oh, they go for a, looks like they, did they go for two there? They do. Interesting call. They get aggressive. They want to, uh, they went with the analytic play, I guess, as we're going to jump in when it gets to that two minute mark. Very interesting call there. I actually really like that call as Cal gets the ball. We have all three timeouts left. Can Utah get a stop? Remember, you've got uh, Nazir Fitzsimmons in the game. You've got um, Nicholas Oakley as Chad Blunt. He's going to keep it. He goes up the middle. And then they also have elite pass rusher from last year. You've got Josh Blair on the other side as Chad Blunt has four touchdowns today, I believe. So second and five. And honestly, this Cal team is not all that talented outside the quarterback position. So we'll see. Can they get the ball back? They are going to run it. Oh, Blunt fakes everybody out again. He goes to the outside. He runs over Oakley. The SFA player gets ran over. But wait, there's a flag. And it's clipping. We're going backwards, baby. So Utah gets bailed out. Their SFA player screws the pooch, but it does not matter. So Utah lives to fight another down here as it's now second and long. I think the analytics go way back in their favor here to get the ball back at least as they hand it off this time up the gut. Robert Butler for four. Coach Moon talking to his staff. Now the question is, does Cal get aggressive here and throw it and potentially leave Utah with a timeout? Watch out for this pass rush and his ear Fitzsimmons. All right. One, he is going to throw this, a dump off, and they're going to stop him. That's Tyler Smoot, the guy who had a story about him this week. He uh, he makes a tackle. He had COVID, and then he makes the critical play there on uh, on third down. He has 13 tackles today. The COVID game from Tyler Smoot is elite. Unbelievable day for Tyler Smoot here, making the game-saving tackle there on the drag route. And that's really the first instance we've seen this season of a uh, of a um, front page story actually being seen with us watching. That's great. So now Utah, they went for two, they got aggressive, and now it works. That field goal can give them the win here if they can drive down. So Coach Moon's analytic play could come into effect here. So first and ten. As they're going to dump that off of the mayor. There is Kira Streaker, the SFA player, the number one recruit of the season. He has 120 today. He does not have that touchdown, though, quite yet, it seems. So if you bet that line, we're still waiting for it. He definitely could easily get it. So here we go. Brown, he has time. Dumps that off to Toko, and they bring him down behind the line. Coco not necessarily known for his receiving ability, but he makes a catch there. 47 seconds and counting. Waiting for a streaker to get back to the line. Brown floats that to streaker. He finds him and broken tackle from streaker. First down. Big play from the number one player in the class. 
He is a deep threat, not necessarily known for his possession skills, but when you're that talented coming out of high school, you can pretty much do everything. So 30 seconds left, Brown looking back towards Streaker. He's jamming it deep, and he hits Doug Copeland for 30. So a big yam gets him in range now. They could potentially, I mean, they're for sure going to win this on a field goal, but they could score a touchdown. Hand off to Toko, that left side. There goes Toko down the sideline, inside the five. Now watch out, though. No timeout. So if Cal gets a miraculous stop here, or if they get a sack, then they may not have enough time to get back to the line. So hand off to Toko. He gets to the outside. Touchdown, Toko Maha Pakarori. Utah takes the lead. A massive comeback here from Utah. Down 17 in the fourth quarter as they're going to go for two. A big time touchdown and they're going for two here. And they're not going to get it. Here comes the sack. So 19 seconds left for Chad Blunt. We have seen crazier. We've literally seen in Blunt's first career game complete a tipped Hail Mary against Michigan State. So anything is uh, anything is possible. Oh, Utah just went for the cover. That's what just happened. They didn't want to play it safe for the field goal. What on earth is Utah doing? They could have gone up for the field goal. They wanted to make them get a touchdown. What a wild decision there. So Utah getting super aggressive. Blunt, they're going to run a screen pass. Don't know if that's the best use of use of their time as they do use a timeout here. 14 seconds. You just need to get Blunt into yam range and you have a chance. Sadly, we are past the days of Darius Toth, so... He needs to get another big-time wide receiver. Blunt. He yams that one, and it's caught with a flag. Hold on. Pass interference, Pass interference on the offense. The screenplay took too long to develop. A legal man downfield. They'll call that every time. And Yui, for the sports book, the covers are... Um, it's a you, you get your money back if it's... If it's exactly the spread. It's only for Bear Cave where it's a cover and no cover. Yeah, gambling for the sports book, a push should be get your money back. As second and 22, we're floating this one. And that's a not a conversion, but a nice play to get it back somewhat into yam range. So three seconds left. Chad Blunt, can he throw it 70 yards? Only a four-man rush. And he gets hit! No yam from Blunt. Down he goes. Andre good off the edge. Utah survives, makes the comeback. They stay undefeated. So what a comeback here. It looked like it was going to be a cow blowout. But Utah survives behind Tyler Smoot, the, the COVID game. 13 tackles, a forced fumble, and a recovery. Unbelievable. Now the question is, next week is, is half his defense out because of COVID? Got a nice pancake there, and then the... A touchdown from Coco or Toko. Let's check out the final stats for a massive early season Pac-12 game. Remember, folks, we are in week four, so we are starting to sprinkle in a lot more conference games. 
as it was all Cal early. It was 20, uh, was that 24 to 7? Even 31, I think, to 7 early. And then Utah popped off 28 straight points. Unbelievable there from Utah. So J.J. Brown didn't have a great start, but he had a great finish. It's all about how you finish. Toko did not get to 100, but he did get two touchdowns. And receiving Keir Streaker led the team, but no touchdown for him. So that line does not hit. Tyler Smoot, the COVID guy. He uh, TFLs. Josh Blair does his thing. Fitzsimmons does end up getting one. But he, it does look like he may have been out there on the last sequence as Andre Good got himself a uh, sack. Deflections. He had three here. A couple of forced fumbles. Oakley had one as well. And then if we go take a look at California, Chad Blunt, how was his day? A great game for him. But once again, this is a team that struggles with talent. It's pretty much hero ball from Chad Blunt every week. And that's kind of why they are, uh, you know, a fringe top 25 team. As you have an elite quarterback, but not much to surround him. As they probably should have won this game. Four TFLs, three, but they just couldn't hang on. The defense struggled at the end. And that will do it. They got one forced fumble, one recovery. The over definitely hits there. Is it? We got 66. And for Bear Cave, it's a cover. But for the sports book, it is a push. So you bet it will either get taken out of your parlay or it will, uh, or it will get refunded on a straight bet. It's always got to get my screenshot here. Yeah, great comeback there for Utah. This is, for a while there, felt like it's going to be the same old Utah, but then they just exploded there in the fourth quarter. I know Utah was a favorite for a lot of people to win the Pac-12. So now we're going to go to the Sickos game of the week. We've got Yui and Western Kentucky taking on Temple, a surprising Temple team this season, led by Coach Bobert. So Yui heads her tails, kick or receive as usual. I don't know why I'm in the Sun Belt. We gotta go to the American. And like I said, two and a half point spread for Yui. And then the uh, the over under for this game is going to be 51 and a half. The line is going to be Laz Palmer. Last time he was on here, they defeated um, Missouri with a nice catch from him. So today, will Laz Palmer get 79 and a half receiving yards for the over under? And finally, we have the jerseys, all blacks with a chrome helmet. All right, so here we go, Yui heads and kick. Yeah, at some point, you'll just take those wins when you can get them. You know, that's one where you just ground out. You're, you're lucky to start one and own conference play. You don't care how you get it. And look at Temple, man. These jerseys are kind of crispy. I love the dotted pattern there for the Owls. We've got Yui here at Western Kentucky taking on Bobert. Western Kentucky are reigning AAC champions. Definitely um, facing some regression, it seems, or at least... Um, not not necessarily regression, but uh, progression from all of their uh, conference foes. So making it that much tougher to do what they did last year. It looks like App State may be a big force to be reckoned with. So here we go. We got Temple. So heads and kick here for Yui. You can see some Leon Fox for Heisman Magic today. We saw it against uh, last time against Coach Tribe. So we'll see if they can do it again. And Temple seems to be a decent team, but uh, the Hilltoppers come out 14-0 here on the road. A great showing so far. 21, and the quick response there from Temple. They're not going down lightly. Can they add one? Yes, they do. All right, so going down the half, down by, uh, down by a touchdown, 21-14 here. And Temple does tie it up, so they've completely stopped their offensive push for Kentucky giving up a lot of points, being outscored 21-7 since the end of that first quarter as we're going back and forth here. We're going to do one more drive and a punt. So 
heavily oh hold on i sim one play we get a 91 yard rush from temple holy toledo pop off a 91 yard rush now we put western kentucky on their heels but looks like they are moving the ball and that's where we're gonna jump in they are at the 25 here we go western kentucky trying to tie this game up we got leon fox under center jackson and this in the backfield the sfa player laz palmer uh up top of your screen and they got Benny Keiko the left tackle. Looks like they're running a bit of clock. They don't want to give Temple the ball back with too much time. So fakes a handoff. Leon Fox has time. Delivers a strike over the middle. And wide open lane. Touchdown, Hilltoppers. It's Laz Palmer, the SFA player, the hero against Missouri. Does it again. And let me know about volume on kind of those big plays. I can always move the mic farther away, closer to my mouth. I think I have it at a good distance, but just let me know. Obviously, first time with this stream. So the Hilltoppers are showing off in the uh, in the in the uh, in the gameplay this season. When we watch them, they are elite. Yes, Laz definitely has that clutch gene. As we see Temple get a nice one, so this is. Potentially our first time ever seeing Temple on a stream. I don't know for sure, but this is definitely few and far between. We see the Owls on Bear Cave streams. Thank you, thank you. It looks like the run triple option, at least some option stuff, as he throws that away. Antonio Harris gets to him. Brent Myers, 9 of 16 today, has a touchdown and a interception. So second and ten here for the Owls, and they're they're playing with the house money at this point. They're down early, and you know they can win this game or go to overtime. They'd obviously love to win in regulation. As Darren Richardson gets himself a nice catch, it looks like Temple is not just going to sit down and, and run the option. They're going to uh, attack the defense here, see if they can get a field goal. Still have all three timeouts as we approach the fifty. Deep drop. Myers has time. Yams is deep down the seam and way overthrown. Oh my, not sure who he thought was down there. That looked like a Lamar Jackson deep shot in an, in a playoff game. <laughs> Thanks, Nathan. And now we're running server, or now we're running triple option as it goes nowhere. DiGiorno has the Western Kentucky money line. Yeah, Phil, it's it's always a great week or a terrible week. And there's never in between. As you get a fullback dive here on third and ten, and it works! An unbelievable call by Bover, Bover, an unconventional coach with an unconventional call. And it works out. This week seems to be the week of the... Uh, of the running conversions from third and fourth and long as we saw in watch party as well as they continue to move it now it now we got to bring into question how good is temple's kicker i can't imagine they're all that great i do i would bet they're not in field goal range quite yet yui screaming on the sideline at her defense says second and three over the middle and they make the tackle i think at this point if you're western kentucky you want to just Hope that the defense can hold. And they, they don't reach field goal range. Because remember, if you have a bad kicker, you're not going to kick until you're inside the 15. Temple over the middle and overthrown. No flag there. Thought there might have been a collision early as Leo, Leroy Wilson made the play. Second and 10 here. Western Kentucky looking for somebody to make that game-saving play, maybe an interception. We've seen it last year. They always got those plays. Game-saving fumble. Can they get another one here? 47 seconds left. He floats it out wide, and that's a completion. It's going to be short, though, as Western Kentucky starts using their timeouts. Third and one now for Kentucky. Triple option engaged. Pull back, doesn't get it. Oh, and Brent Myers gets it, and that's going to be a first down. So now you can't stop the clock. 
Things are starting to look a little bit grim for the Hilltoppers after a great tie game. Put Les Palmer on defense, dang it. Does he get another fullback dive? They stack him up this time. Hoping to make that field goal a little bit tougher. As Caleb Bradley's in on the tackle. We had one missed field goal earlier. Can we get another? Triple option. Still have one timeout here for Temple. They're going to flip the play. Comfortable just running this clock. Fullback dive again. An open hole. And he falls forward. They're going to mark him short. That might be the worst thing that could have happened. I think at that point, you got to let him score. So they're not settling for the field goal here. They're actually going for it. 13 seconds left. They're going to throw it. And he throws that out wide. And it's caught. And pushed out of bounds. That could have been tipped. That could have been a fumble. Temple barely survives there. As we're at the one, they're still not bringing out the field goal team. They're just begging to lose. Second and goal for Temple. Under center, they hand it off. And touchdown, Temple. They take the lead. After all that ridiculousness, they finally punch it in. The underdog gets it. I think that hits the over as well. Man, if you pick Temple in this game, you're wild. I can't believe it. So six seconds left. They could potentially get a return here and maybe get one playoff. Got to get him down, though. Nice hit there. Gets him down. George Love couldn't make the play. So three seconds left. We're going to see how far Leon Fox can throw it. And obviously, Laz Palmer, he has been the Bear Cave savior as of late. Can he do it again? Top of your screen, number 80. Three seconds left. They need about 74 yards. And a free blitzer! And no time on the clock. Leon Fox goes down. That game is over. So the aggressive play from Temple and Coach Bober gets it done and unconventional play calling from him today. He did a fullback dive on third and 10 and it works. And then he did a blitz on the Hail Mary and it worked. Leon Fox never saw him coming in. Leon Fox was cooking. He had four touchdowns today. <laughs> a definitely a tough game. No stream crash. Uh, I've dropped no frames. Just reload your stream. Shouldn't be any problems here. I haven't had any pop-ups or bad things happen. Uh oh. <laughs> you we praying on the blue square, and you know when you're praying on the blue square that you are down in the dumps, man. Tough showing here for the Hilltoppers. But honestly, they... Yeah, they had the lead early, but they got that nice touchdown. It's just the defense couldn't quite hold. That was just a tough one. So the question is, Laz Palmer, um, he got a couple of touchdowns, but what about the yards? That is the question. And also, they gave up that big touchdown. Leon Fox, 257, four TDs. A great game for him today. Rushing the ball. Uh, Jackson Viss, 130 always doing well and palmer he gets the over by two and a half yards so if you bet the over there you are rolling in the dough as really spread the ball around here today benny keichel eight eight pancakes for the sfa guy and on defense caleb bradley doug lee four tfls for doug lee here today sacks only one uh one interception from antonio harris no fumbles as we look at Temple, Brent Myers, he put together a decent end there. A couple of weird decisions. But obviously the rush game was just a little bit too much. Triple option got it done today. They made the plays when they had to. And on defense, Cunningham and Newby. A lot of TFLs as well. That's, that always helps you out. Got a sack from Forte. No picks. A lot of deflections though. And no forced fumbles. So a tough showing there in the Sickos game of the week. Definitely a fun one to watch, though. Another classic. 
And any time we put Western Kentucky on stream, it always seems to be an instant classic. So that's something I appreciate about that program. They always bring in entertaining game, to say the least. Always gives you a lot of content. All right, so as we continue on in this uh, week four Bear Cave week, we are now going to the Patreon game of the week. So if you join Patreon, you can help vote and set the line for the Patreon game of the week. This week, they chose that we're going to go over to the ACC and take a look at Florida State at Syracuse. And this game is a push line, so it's just a who wins type of a scenario. And then if you bet the over-under here today... Uh, it's 62 and a half on the over under tails and kick for Jackie Moon trying to get the loss out of Kent State out of his mouth as we're looking for a Xander Poole interception the free safety will he get a pick today and for jerseys um, he is going with where is the Jackie Moon all white so I don't know if Florida State has an all white helmet Ooh, they do that is actually kind of crispy. I never thought that they had that. That is actually a crispy look. All right, Jackie Moon. I see your drip. I see your drip. All right, so we haven't seen a lot about Syracuse this year. We obviously saw Florida State in week one get a big win over Wisconsin, who seems to be a very volatile team. They either blow someone out or they get blown out. Um, so we don't really know much about this Syracuse team. And then obviously we know less about, or a little bit more about Florida State. They had the transfer, Ken Moss from Texas State. Um, but important point though, Syracuse is without their top SFA player, uh, Charlie Heaton, the wide receiver. As we take a look at this crazy Atlantic division, you got Notre Dame sitting at the top after they beat Clemson. Remember folks, it's after week four today, so after all today's game, you'll get your first look at standings in your division, seeing how everything shakes out, as we want tails and kick here for Florida State. Tails and kick. So Lashard Weeks there at the circle. All right, here we go. Syracuse, we're in the Carrier Dome. And not much brewing here early on. So the underbetters are cooking as Florida State breaks ground first on the road. Defense looking good as Syracuse finally punches one home. Florida State, though, retakes the lead rather easily as Syracuse does tie it right before halftime. So back and forth game. Syracuse now in Florida State responds to the big play. 21-21 as we enter the fourth quarter. This game, nobody's giving an inch. As soon as you score, I score. And a nice stop there as we get a field goal no good from Syracuse. And if you guys remember, Syracuse is the team that cut the SFA kicker, uh, Quinn McCrug, for this Bradley guy, and he misses a key one right there. So that's another front page story making uh, making some news. As now, 21-21, we're almost to the point where we get in there. We'll see, are we going to be able to watch this one? We get a 49 field goal here from Florida State. So as we hit the two-minute mark, we're going to jump on in on board with Syracuse, trying to bring this game back. 24-21 around midfield. Rich is the quarterback. Long away from the days of DeAndre Wilkinson and Corey Burke and Dexter McCluster. Way different team as Will Moore gets a nice first down. And they're going to hurry it up now. Corey Fisher gets his eighth tackle of the day. I love these all-white jerseys. So Rich over the middle, and it's a drop here. Adam Rich throwing his hands up in the air like, you got to help me out. Remember, this is a push game, so it's all about who wins as we're under center again. Syracuse does have a very good kicker. He missed that last one from 50, but if he gets another chance, I doubt he'll miss again. Let's get another close bear cave game. That's all you can hope today. Sometimes you get really short Bear Cave streams. Other times you get very lengthy ones. And remember, folks, we got a great game day coming up with Auburn and Fresno State. Definitely a unique game day, to say the least, as Rich drops back. He delivers a floater, and he hits his tight end down to the 20, well into field goal range. So now Florida State's got to start tightening up, prevent the lead. Salas for 27. That was on Drake Eklund, the SFA linebacker. 
So Rich now is going to hand off to Moore, and he goes down in the backfield. Delay give, not a lot of acceleration there for Moore. Rather, uh, rather mediocre play call if you don't say so. If I don't say so myself, as we go second and 11 now. Going a little bit I formation. So of all three timeouts for Syracuse. And that is a quick strike. Brad Jordan on the reception. Remember, they don't have Charlie Heaton, the SFA player. He's still out. I believe he's battling turf toe. I may be mistaken, but it's a short injury. Third and five here. Florida State would like to get a stop here at least to get some time in regulation to win this one. Rich. He has some time, rolls right, and he's running out, and he's sacked. A big-time sack there from Florida State. Chad Robinson is second of the day. So we are over an hour today on Bear Cave. This is going uh, very slow today, so we're jumping into a lot of these games. We're only halfway through Bear Cave. So kick from right hash. They are just going to let it completely run out. This is Bradley. It's only a 40-yarder. So 40-yarder from right hash to tie up the ball game. Send us to overtime in the Carrier Dome. The kick is up, and it is good from Syracuse. So 15 seconds left, Florida State. Are they just going to fall on it, or are they going to try to make some magic? Dierko Claxton, Ken Moss, Amonra Leuha, plenty of SFA players. Buggy Gumption. Yeah, it's definitely a slow bear cave today, and those are sometimes the best ones, as they're just going to kneel it here, as we are going to get some free football. Remember, folks, we always get the... Uh, the... Um, the less important games, I'd say, before the right side ones are always our top 25 games. So still some big ones to come. But we get some free football here. Great choice for the Patreon folks. Uh, making a push game, and it goes to OT. All right, so um, would you like to offense or defense? No, no choice here for Florida State. So here we go. Yerko Claxon and company. First time we see him today. You got Ken Moss in the backfield. Quick option. Yerko keeps it. He breaks a tackle. Not known for his legs, but he gets a nice amount. He gets eight there. So second and two. Working on this Syracuse defense. Trying to score. SFA players all over the field. Ken Moss gets a carry. He goes to the outside. He shrugs off one and gets about five. That's another first down. Ken Moss only 68 uh, yards today on the ground. So we'll see if he gets a lot of run here in the fourth quarter as he's relatively fresh. Monra Leuha, top of your screen. You got Buggy Gumshoe with his hand on the ground. That's number 69. So they're going to throw it. He's going out for a route, and he throws that. We got some quick penetration. Ken Moss can't turn that into anything as they go backwards. Got to praise Dierko Claxton and knowing where his dump off man was, but definitely uh, an errant throw and bad result. Better to just throw that one away. Might have been trying to. Ken Moss might have just picked that one out. So second and 15 here. They, can, they need to get down to the two, it seems. Dumps that one off. Ken Moss trips over his own man. He was open. He had some open room, but tripped on his receiver. So now he got a third and 12. So a couple of self-inflicted mistakes here on this drive. So third and 12 split backs. Can Florida State convert? Only a four-man rush. Claxton dumping that off to Moss. And he breaks the tackle, but he goes out of bounds. Field goal incoming. So field goal unit out coming to give Florida State the early lead here. You see Otto the Orange top of your screen dancing and they convert. And how about this upset today behind uh, 
It's Dequavius Gates and Tyreek Asher, 197, two touchdowns from Asher and Gates, and they shock the world, beating Baylor at home. A top 10 Baylor loses two in a row. So back to the drawing board for Coach Flame Shades when he took over there. And these games, uh, the Ohio State game, Texas game, that's not a real score. But Clemson did barely beat Eastern Michigan. Same thing with San Diego State. Hey, he got him a win, man. That's all that matters. Yeah, you know, if he's hurt, whatever. But a marquee win, the best win of Sped's career for sure. So Syracuse, a touchdown wins the game. A field goal sends us to a second frame. Dumps that one off early. Barrett Smith here for five. Remember, we're still looking out for a Xander Poole interception. That would definitely end the game here. Number 29, top right of your screen. And a quick throw out. Oh, and he baits his man, but a big hit there from Xander Poole saves the line of scrimmage. So now Florida State has a chance to force the field goal. Third and one. Definitely run is an option here. Man is in motion, is tight end, and he's going to block here as they actually throw it out of the back of the end zone. Rich didn't like his, his options, I guess, as they're going to go for the tie. So bailed out here for Florida State. So the field goal to tie up the game, and it's good from Syracuse. 27-27 as we head to his second frame. So now we flip the field. Syracuse will now start with the ball. Probably not. Game day probably start around uh, 9 Eastern. Dumping that off to the receiver. I mean, it just it completely depends on, on how long these games go. You know, everything does will get done today. So we're in our second overtime frame here. Got an epic bear cave coming today. Give me a nice highlight video as well. Is Rich. Deep drop here from Rich. Dump set off, and that's going to be a first down. So Jordan over 100 yards now. Rich over 300. So this Florida State defense continues to bend, but they haven't broken. Just keep giving up field goals. Syracuse dumps that one off. Nice tackle there. Andy Green doesn't get anything. Second and 11. Syracuse looking to punch it in for their first lead in a while. And Will Moore gets four. So another big chance here for for uh, Florida State. They've been great in the run game. Can they stop the pass? They're going to delay give it here. An interesting call, and they're not going to do anything with it. The oval unit coming on back out. So a couple of questionable calls here for Syracuse on third down. So you're going to get our third field goal of the overtime period to take the lead, Bradley. Kick is up, and it's good. So up to 30 here for Syracuse. And those over betters are hoping for a touchdown here, I believe. So Florida State now. Same scenario Syracuse was in. They can win with a touchdown, tie with a field goal. They're going to hand it off, and a nice hole there. Brad Ruff in the backup gets six. Second and four now. Both these defenses have been locked down in the second half. We're not to your game yet, Skook. We're still on the Patreon game of the week, so we still have four games left. Slow bear cave today. So third and three, Florida State. Got to get a conversion here. Quick option. He does get it to Ken Moss, and he goes out of bounds. 
This Florida State team can't get out of their own way as they now bring the field goal unit to tie the game back up. From left hash, it is a bit of a tough one, about 35 yards, and it's good. Oh my goodness. So we're into a third overtime frame here in the Patreon at Bear Cave game of the week. Here we go again, Florida State back. We've had two periods and four field goals as Ken Moss now gets nine. Defenses have been playing incredibly. So Mike getting lucky with his over. Second and one, Dierko hands it off to Ken Moss. He has some room up the gut. Ken Moss extends, he gets to the one. Incoming goal line stand. All right, so first and goal for the one. Can we get our first touchdown of overtime? Remember, we're after the second period, so you got to go for two. Hand off, triple option, and they get in there. That's Steven Jones. Touchdown, Florida State. So now they're going to go for two here. To make it a two or a... An eight-point game. Claxton hands it off to Moss. He finds some room. Moss, and they don't give him the spot. Oh, no. It, there's no challenges here. That was so close. They don't give him it. The horse collar tackle keeps him out of the end zone. So we'll see if that comes back to bite him as they get a deep throw now. Anything short of a touchdown gives Syracuse or gives Florida State the win. Syracuse trying to score. Hands off to Moore. Delayed give. Nothing doing. It's triple OT. Yes, it is. Yeah, so after so we're going on old overtime rules back in 2014. Uh, first two periods are normal, and then after the second, you have to go for two. No more extra points. So more. It's different from today's where they just alternate two-point conversions. Um, this is back in the day when you had that LSU A&M game go to seven OTs, last like six hours. Third and nine here. Big chance for Florida State. Can they get the stop? Floating that out wide. They get a lot of it back, but they're not going to get it complete. So game on the line for Syracuse. Fourth and two. In the shotgun. Syracuse drops back. Nice pass protection on the run, and it's tipped, and that's going to do it. Florida State wins. The tackle doesn't matter. They survive an epic ACC game. FSU, it never seems to break their way on stream, but it does here today. That must feel great for Florida State. And Coach Jackie Moon is is that that uh that goal line, the the two point conversion, man, that was questionable. I kind of want to see that replay, see if he did get in or not. Yeah, in turn, I mean, over time, this game's already broken. I doubt that they want to touch it with a mod. Yeah, we, we got to check out that two-point tackle and said defensive end getting the tip. That's Robinson. He had two sacks on the day, dropping into coverage. Rich never saw him. Triple coverage. That's a Lamar Jackson throw right there. Um, so at least in the base game, if you play games, sometimes like half the time your overtime will glitch and give you the ball twice or whoever has the ball first twice and then the game just ends. So it's like a weird glitch. We don't have it in the SFA because, um, for whatever reason, we never seem to get that. So knock on wood, it's never happened. As we take a look here, big plays and then, oh my God, one, two, three, four, five, six straight field goals here. 
you like special teams, this was the game for you. So Dierico Claxton, 236 and a TD. Ken Moss got up to 88. Luha only two. Puggy Gumption got three. And no touchdown for Leuha. Is on the defense side. It was all Chad Robinson owning the day here. A lot of TFLs, a lot of only the two sacks. And then interceptions, none for our boy Xander Poole, unfortunately. That one does not hit. As we go over to Syracuse, Adam Rich. Not a great day for the senior. Will Moore, just under three yards of carry on 40 carries. Tough. Over 100 from Jordan. And then on defense, 10 tackles. A lot of TFLs here from the top two. No sacks, no extracurriculars for this defense. And that pretty much was the difference. And then let's, uh, before we leave this game, let's just see if we can see that highlight real quick. Uh, view replay. I don't know if they save it. They do. All right. So does Ken Moss get screwed here? So it looks like he made the adjustment there, met him in the hole, and is he down before that ball crosses... Yeah, that, that's not particularly close. What a uh, what a tackle. It looked from our angle like he was in, but his his elbow and his knee and his butt definitely go down here before he rolls over. So definitely a, a, a big-time tackle there. Unfortunately, it didn't wind up mattering for Syracuse. So I got to get my screenshot as we're running on a very long bear cave today. So the blue square has given us a great sequence of games, a lot of highlights. Remember, guys, VODs will always be available later tonight. Highlights tomorrow as we continue. And we're finally going to do my game. I always do mine at this spot. Remember, I do not sim my game um, off stream if I'm not on stream, I sim it in front of you guys. So we'll see. Can East Carolina get it done on the road against the, uh, the Hokies? And we're taking on Sandman. Enter Sandman's blaring. And we get the win. Not by as much as you'd think. But we do still cover, I believe. Because I think the cover is 18. So we still do get it done. So big game for us here. We'll take that any day. As it was 28-0 entering the fourth quarter. No touchdowns given up. Boom, shakalaka. The haters are in shambles. ECU survives another game. As now we go to the right side of the graphic. So, as you guys know, we always save the best games for last. As we're going to head to um, Texas at Ohio State. And this is a battle of the behemoths as a great shout from... Uh, from Tribe this week. This is the first ever matchup in the SFA between Texas and Ohio State. It's crazy that this never happened in the Sim matchup era when these two teams were really good or in a non-conference because this feels like a definitely a dream non-conference game that, that we would have manually set up. So this is a great, great find from Coach Tribe. I love that idea of, of searching the, the matchup histories each week as Texas is a one and a half point favorite. Remember, this is a CPU versus CPU game. Dave's no longer over at Texas. Um, so we're just going to go in. But one and a half point spread for Texas. And this over under is going to be 50.5. And the prop bet today is Lake Hutchinson, the defensive end for Texas. Will he get a sack today against Lance Malone and company? This is an Ohio State team. They've been on stream every single week. They had a great uh, overtime loss against Georgia. They blasted Alabama at Brian Denny. And then last time, just barely came up short. Um, blanking on who they played, but it was another great team. Uh, man, who was that? Mm, I'm blanking. Um, but Texas this week, it's been a very, very hard schedule for Ohio State for sure. So one and a half point favorites, as always, I do heads and kick for the CPUs. Keep everything uniform. 
And can Lance Malone and company, they are still ranked at 1 and 2. The only ranked team, ah uh, yes, UNC. Thank you, Sir Laxis Brio. That great game against you. We won by one point. So Texas starts out with a field goal. Ohio State gets the tutty. And we saw Texas earlier against uh, Baylor when they lost on a uh, last drive interception as Ohio State goes up by a couple of scores here at home. As we head to the uh, third quarter, a quick score by Ohio State, but Texas comes back. Texas, they take their lead now. Both teams. This is a this is a barricade that's just destined to have a lot of good games, a lot of close games, a lot of similar overall teams today. And you always know that's a recipe for um, some big plays as, oh dear, we've got a, potentially, I think, an injury to Lance Malone. I do not see him um, throwing the ball as it's Hoffman. So Hoffman, can he get it done? We don't have our boy Lance Malone. But they are moving the ball. They get a touchdown before we jump in. Hoffman to Rollins here. And remember, there are missing SFA player uh, Terrell Flowens as well. So the injury bug biting the Buckeyes a little bit here. So last time we jumped in with um, we jumped in with uh, Texas was against Baylor, and they choked. Can they do it today? And we come out to them punting at the two-minute mark. So they're going to trust their defense here against the backup quarterback. Definitely an interesting play here from the Longhorns. We'll see if it works out as they do have all of their timeouts left. Similar to the game we saw last week where the, I don't remember the matchup, but they, they punted in this scenario. I think it was the Baylor game, and Baylor just ran it out. So we get a punt here, Ohio State on the return, and a nice job. Oh, he can't wrap up though. Josh Washington evaded his man. Very even matchup from both sides. Texas though, they need to get a stop on the defense. So remember, Texas was the favorite coming in on the road. And I, we've already beaten the over on this game. So Ohio State, one of the best rushing offenses traditionally in the SFA, in terms of scheme at least. Just needs a couple of first downs. So we're already at the hour, 21 minute mark here in Barricade. Second and eight, got Hoffman in. Now, Hoffman is a lot better of a running QB as we get a big play here from Dallas Johnson. That could do it. But Hoffman, I know he's another freshman on this roster. He is a bit better in the run game, so might actually be better for this uh, scenario than Lance Malone. And the Lance Malone is the uh, better passer. Is they're going to just take victory formation now. As I don't think it quite seals the game here for Ohio State. They are probably going to still have to punt the ball, but it looks like they're okay, satisfied just taking the kneels here. I think they are still going to have to punt the ball, so we might get Texas with one play. This would be a massive victory, and now hold on, they're coming out in pass formation on third and long. They do hand it off to Jacobs. Can he get to the edge? He's pushing, he's pushing, and no. So a four-second difference. That took a lot of time off the clock. Ohio State, all they have to do is punt this deep and get a bit of hang time. Just avoid the block. And Ohio State will go back to 2-2 two and two with wins over Georgia and, Ohio, or and Texas. Two big wins, two quality losses. Interested to see where the coaches put them this week. So we got fourth and five now. See, can they run out the clock on this play? Or is Texas going to get a free play? Obviously, you want to try to... If this goes out of bounds, one second on the clock. Texas gets an opportunity. That was the longest second I've ever seen. Clock operators are working for the Longhorns today. As they get one play, 80 yards, can they do the unthinkable? Can be a deep play here on the run. He floats it down the middle. It's tipped in the way, and Morris Stewart falls to the ground. Ohio State survives. A massive win here at home for the Buckeyes. As they complete a crazy non-conference schedule at 2-2, two two, they've got to be happy with that as they head to the Big Ten schedule. 
with two very high quality wins over Texas and Georgia. They did lose to Al or sorry, wins over Alabama and uh, Texas. Now Alabama's getting better, so that's a quality win. UNC, if they keep winning, that'll be a great loss. And Georgia, obviously, you want them to keep winning. And then you need Texas to stop sucking, right? But two and one versus the SEC this season for Ohio State. They'll take that. With that overtime loss to Georgia in the back pocket as well. Uh, Ohio State definitely in the mix for the playoff. We still have quite a few games coming up. If you're here looking for game day, that will start uh, right after Barricade. We've got three more games to go. That's going to be a great one between Auburn and Fresno State. Definitely a unique um, a unique game day choice, but I think there's a great buildup. we got Auburn, a great surprise for Season 14. The villain arc of, um, of Chadley Brown, the SFA player, the quarterback for the reigning Mountain West champs. So definitely going to be a fun one for sure. As let's check out the scoring summary and the stats. So we also got to watch out. We got Dad Mooney with a touchdown, but we got to watch out. Lance Malone, the star freshman. Is he hurt for a long period of time? Or what's happening? Morris Stewart had a great game. Aaron Allen as well, but they took the loss. This is a team we know pretty well. And then the question is on the sacks. Sonny Myers got himself a sack, but no Lake Hutchinson. No sacks for him today. So that's another one that doesn't hit. As you get a couple of deflections, no fumbles. As you go to Ohio State here, check out their offense. So Malone looks like he only played the first quarter. Hoffman, Vincent Hoffman came in. He played well as, or okay. Um, good enough to get him a win. Dallas Jacobs carrying the bulk. Had a rushing touchdown for Lance Malone. And on defense, the tackle leaders got a lot of TFLs, a lot of people making plays in the backfield. Uh, two sacks on the day, no interceptions, deflections two from Kirk Jones, and a fumble here from Marcus Sanders. All right, that will do it. Got a few more games to go. Big time bear cave today. I love when we get a good bear cave. There's nothing worse than having like a 45 minute stream with no gameplay. It rarely happens. We normally get at least one good game, but uh, definitely love a longer bear cave than a shorter bear cave. So now we're gonna move on here. We're still on the right side of the graphic. We got Texas A&M at LSU. So we got Coach Skook. Let me know if you're here. Heads or tails, kick or receive. As we are headed to SEC play, a lot of people in the community are very high on this LSU team. Well, us old heads in the community know that they are typically fraudulent. Um, so let me see what the jersey combo is for Scoop. What he wanted, white out per usual. All right. If you are following along on the sports book, this is a three and a half point spread for AM. In terms of the betting, is this over under is 51.5 and then we're actually looking at rex beavers rushing tds this is one of the bigger lines of the day can he get two rushing touchdowns at plus 500 this is a big time opportunity as we want to get the all white going here um i don't know for sure but Skook, if you're here, let me know heads or tails, kick or receive as we get on into this game. This is a big one in the division. Obviously, Oklahoma typically runs it, but if Oklahoma picks up a loss or two, the winner of this game is going to be in prime position, especially with Texas not looking as strong as they were last year. The winner of this game likely is that number two is we've got rain here in Death Valley. A&M going on the road. They feel disrespect in the polls as Rex Beavers finally breaks through into the Heisman conversation. But Skook all week has been badgering the community how number 20 is disrespectful. They just beat Baylor, even though Baylor just lost to Oklahoma State. And then I think LSU's overranked. I called them a pretender in the Patreon podcast. So we will see where the roads lead to here. LSU at home, led by Coach Llama. 
We hear the LSU chance as we get the heads, and LSU will pick. Remember, they still have a ton of SFA players on that team. Terrell Pryor, the former Penn State quarterback. All right, so we had this is a big time matchup, and AM starts with a, with a field goal. LSU gets touchdown, but they miss the extra point, so kicking may be an issue today for LSU at least, as not a lot of other scoring happening this half. The under looking nice as it's 9 to 3 here at halftime. Not a lot of love from Rex Beavers. Percy Knox is invisible as usual on stream, and LSU continues. Oh, thank you, Texas AM. They finally get one back. But can they get a touchdown? Can they take the lead here? They do not there. LSU looking to pull off a shocker here at home. And they get the touchdown. It's a two-score game. And remember, we can't jump in unless we get to that. And on fourth down, Rex Beavers turns it over. No. This is a bad omen here for a and as they go up 15. We can't jump in unless they are able to get this back within a score. And they make a play. They're starting to move the ball, but time is their biggest factor here. But they get the touchdown. So we're going to watch now as they're going to go within eight points. 39 seconds left. They only have two timeouts, so they have to get the onside kick now. We saw last week Auburn recover an onside kick against Nebraska. Can we get another one? Back-to-back -back weeks. A&M. This would be a tough, tough loss for Skook as that's going to be recovered by LSU, and they are going to close this one out. That's Phil Harold, the running back, getting it. Yeah, 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 Nick. Well, yeah, to be fair, the stream fraud, or the Sim God stream frauds all had Sim games. Tennessee and App State were Simmed on Bear Cave. That's basically still a Sim game. So my point still stands. And then you can't, what you can't, you can't hit me on Van, on on Buffalo. They played Vanderbilt. Leave me alone. I even told you in the stream they'll have a great game against Vanderbilt, and then they'll still be bad because Vanderbilt's an easy dub, right? LSU is really the only miss. LSU's the only miss. Now they still have to they still have to not be dumb on fourth down. Remember, it is a llama offense. I could see them snapping this ball. As they are up eight here, this would be a big win here for uh for LSU, a marquee victory in the Llama era. As the under does look like it's gonna hit. Yeah. Coach uh yeah, Coach Zach using his pansy wansy coordinator to rig the vote. Remember, guys, it was a tie vote, and uh, App State and his and his ghost coordinator had two votes, and they voted both Auburn because they're a big pile of wiener. So, I'm calling App State a fraud until we see him on, until I see some gameplay, and even on Bear Cave, Lynn Saunders couldn't throw the ball; they had to run it. So, I don't know, man. Big pile of wiener. Yes, sir. As LSU completes an insane upset here today. Congratulations to Coach uh, to Coach Lama. Nobody nobody believes in this team. But now they beat Rice. <laughs> they beat, uh, now they beat a good quality A&M team. So we'll see how high they climb in the rankings. Are they for real? Can they push Oklahoma? We will see. It, uh, Zach, Zach, stop the propaganda. I'm stopping you right there. We know dang well that game would not be 49-14 on a game day setting. No shot. No shot that game would be 49-14 on a game day setting. I would put my life savings, my entire net value, that it would not be that nearly that close or that uh, that big of a win for App State. They still could have won, but not by not by 35. All right, Beavers here. Bad day for him. Did he get two touchdowns? He didn't even get one, so that bet doesn't hit. Knox actually did something today. He got a receiving touchdown. Jackie Knight on defense. Really the only guy that showed up, it seems. You got a sack here. And a couple interceptions, one from Dale Campbell. A couple of deflections, no forced fumbles. LSU, you got Grant Davis. Got a touchdown interception. Two touchdowns on the ground for Graham. 
throw. Prior, the man, the myth, the legend, is Sean Niebuhr's the Million Dollar Van. He only got 65 yards today. And on defense, you got Armani Sanders, the transfer from ASU, getting seven. Got two sacks here. Interceptions, none. Deflections, quite a few here. They just couldn't hang on to... Oh, my God, look at all these deflections. Beavers could have had, like, 50 or, like, you know, 10 interceptions. Look like Bishop Moore out there. All right, that's going to do it here. I'm not a I'm not a hater of App State by any means, but um I like I actually like the team, but when your own coach doesn't believe in your own team, you're going to get that Joel Embiid moniker. Uh, you know, you guys are the you guys are the make a wish team until I see you on stream now in my head. That that just leaves a bad taste in my mouth when you're when you're on a game day vote and you don't vote for your own team to be on sim, you're just running. You're running. You don't want to play in Denver. Nobody wants to ever play in Denver. I'll probably will end up ranking LSU. Um, my, my whole thing against LSU is just their history in the SFA. They always have talent, but they always disappoint us. They're like IRL Texas before this season, right? So, um, all right, as we continue to move on, chug away in this game day, we've got two more games, and this one is going to be a great one. We've got Cyril Axis Bryo, the number three team in the nation, taking on Georgia Tech, who should have beaten Tennessee. They choked under pressure. Uh, so let's see. It's a three-point spread for the home team. And um, the over-under for this game... The over-under for this game is going to be 41.5. So very, very low over-under. And uh, the, what what we're watching for today is Juice Riggs over-under on... Uh, Juice Riggs over-under on pancakes today. He is obviously the pancake god in the sim. Um, and Mike wants to go traditional today. He wants to go with the black watch set. Black watch. All right. Black watch. Here we go. Ooh, I like this. Got a little bit of old school here. So, Sierra Laxis, Briar, I've seen you in chat. Let me know heads or tails, kick or receive, as we're going to jump in. This is a UNC team. Got a couple of very close wins. They got one against Stanford. They got one against... Um, Ohio State, so two great wins already as they start ACC play, and this is, besides East Carolina, their biggest conference game of the season. As we know in the Coastal, it's a three-way battle this season uh, against ECU, against Georgia Tech, and UNC. Who is going to be the team that wins this division? It was ECU last year, despite losing to North Carolina, so can North Carolina prove that they are the top dog this year is we're on the road. We're in Atlanta, Bobby Dodd Stadium. Sir Laxis, bro, tails never fails and kick. All right. So two very different philosophies for this team, not just scheme-wise, but team-building-wise. We have a team in Georgia Tech that loves to build through recruiting and particularly through uh, reward players specifically. And then you got North Carolina who exclusively does the transfer portal. So we'll see how they face each other today next quarter as UNC starts with three points. Touchdown for Georgia Tech. Remember, they run that triple option. It's always the X factor in these games. And got to say, early, you got to you gotta give Georgia Tech their props. They don't go down early. That's always the worst possible thing for a triple option team to do because if you go down early, you get out of your your offense. And a big touch or a big touchdown there for Georgia Tech. And uh, now the defense is clutching up. So as we head to the fourth quarter, this is a low-scoring game. The under might actually hit as we're at 17-17 here. Oh, baby. So we're going to go one play at a time in these big games. I don't want to accidentally get under uh, two minutes, especially with a triple option drive. They can bleed the clock out in a matter of seconds. A big play here for Garrett. And a touchdown to Brock Thunderbird. The SFA player transfer from Mississippi State gives them the lead. So another late game collapse here potentially for Georgia Tech. They did have the lead as we will jump in at that two-minute mark. All right, fourth and two. So UNC punting the ball back. We've got a nice, uh, I love this. we got the blue and the black going against each other. A little bit of color rush as they are going to run this play. They don't bleed out the clock. Interesting strategy there from UNC as we're going to get a nice return here for Georgia Tech. Remember, they are in this scenario against Tennessee last week. One last drive. They needed a touchdown. They got down to the one, and then they gave it to Marco Schroeder. They put it in his hands, and then he completely flopped the game away. 
So can Georgia Tech do it again? Marco Schroeder under center, Todd Wards, Dante Lesser. You got Juice Riggs, top of your screen. Last week, it was Schroeder with his legs. That one's almost intercepted. Walter Lee could have had the touchdown. Or, uh, sorry, an interception there. That was risky there for Schroeder. Remember, the, the thing about Schroeder his whole career is he's never been, been able to shut games out. He's been the starter here for, I think, the better part of four seasons. Second and ten. It's going to be a screen pass this time. He throws that one away as... His, uh, his slip screen guy never got out of there because he's under 50%. It's not a great start. Like I was saying earlier, is last week they had success moving the ball on the final drive by Marco Schroeder using his legs. So we'll see if they can convert here. Sierra Laxis Brio trying to get underneath Mike's skin yet again, and they get the sack. The ball's on the ground. The offensive line gets it, but at what cost? Big time sack. So now you got to think, are they going to punt this and rely on the timeouts? No, they're going for it on 4th and 22. 4th and 22, game on the line. Schroeder, a deep drop. He deflects. He overthrows again. Turnover on downs, and now we are still going to watch. We got to see if Cyrilax's Brio, if they can... Uh, get a score here to put the game away. Schroeder, Schroeder, Schroeder. And he's going to hand off now. Brock Thunderbird, can he end the game? Uh, negative, are you Coach Negs? Are you the uh, Vandy coach? Welcome into the stream. As we get Brock Thunderbird, and he gets one yard. So Georgia Tech staying in the game. Ideally, Coach Mike would like a turnover here. They got it quite a few against Tennessee. So we know these defenders can catch the ball. Maybe rely on Perry Sly in the middle. Seven-footer to lay a hit. Man in motion, that's Clayton Forte, the athlete. They hand it off to Thunderbird up the guy. He gets the first down and a lot more. Over a man, touchdown UNC, and that is the dagger. All right, so that is going to do it here. UNC stays in front. They get a critical win to start out the ACC schedule this season as now it's two scores. We go back to the sim. So we'll see if Georgia Tech can get a touchdown. No, they don't. They turn it back over on downs, and that is going to do it here from Atlanta. 31-17, UNC on top as Thunderbird got it done. Three total touchdowns. And another close loss that Georgia Tech felt like they had. They were leading, uh, I believe they were leading 17-10 to 10 at one point there in the second half. And the over does end up hitting with that last touchdown from Brock Thunderbird. And the game ends on another Marco Schroeder overthrow. You got a question. How much longer until we see freshman Clayton Toon? I don't think Mike would burn the red shirt of... Uh, the Bear Cave reward player, Kirko Squatch. But man, Clayton Thorne might, he's not that much lower of an overall. Or Clayton Toon, I mean. A big time result for North Carolina. The Carolinas, man, they're dominating the top five. Yeah, Clemson top five, East Carolina, UNC. Lesser got a big time run today, though. Let's check the stats. We, um, so we're going to go Josh Garrett. He's now the full-time starter. Another beautiful day. Like that completion percentage to go up, but you'll take what you can get. Burke over 100. Acosta got a, got a catch. TFLs here. A lot of them, and obviously with an option offense, that tends to happen. Two sacks. No interceptions. A uh, couple of deflections here, and two fumbles on the day. So Brandon Jackson, Joseph Polo, they get one. Um, it's going to start in week five, so no, not the stats this week. You can request individual players, but I'm going to start the full, and I'll put out an announcement as well because I'm also um, changing another thing 
I'm not going to offer early early uh, results anymore just because we're introducing sim uh, results and I don't want to jeopardize the integrity of the sports book in any way. I don't think that's a good idea at all. Uh, as Dante Lesser does go over 100. Now blocking. Did he get it? No, he didn't. Juice Riggs disappoints only one pancake today. As Reggie Gibbons leading the way here in the tackles. Nate Alston continuing to prove he is a elite addition in the transfer portal for Coach Mike. No sacks, though, today. And no interceptions. So none of those elite turnovers that they got against Tennessee. A couple of deflections and two forced fumbles. One from Freddie Kazili, the SFA player. Interesting. They both were recovered. So a lot of fumbles this year I've, I've been seeing. And that is going to do it here from Atlanta. As Georgia Tech, man, they seem like a very good 2-2 two two team. Definitely in kind of the same boat as uh, as Tennessee. But you got to think as well as, you know, there are two wins against triple option teams. And then, you know, they just unable to get done. Are they still maybe a step away from competing at the top of the of the SFA? Obviously, plenty of time for them to right the ship, but... All right, so as we head now, we got one more game today, and this one is going to be a banger. We got Coach Mango and TCU taking on Coach Rick and Minnesota. We're going to check to make sure we have all the games simmed just to double check. That is our game we're going to watch, and then that is our game day game, which is coming up immediately following this game. Uh, so we got TCU at Minnesota. Uh, Mango, if you're here, let me know. Heads or tails, kick or receive. And then we're going to start the prediction for this game. Remember, guys, I don't have any spreads or anything on these ones. It's just a who wins. Uh, do you have TCU or do you have Minnesota getting it done? Remember, we've seen both of these teams on game day. They're both games where uh, they're very defensive heavy. Um, so I'm going to give you guys a minute here. Get those Bob and us ready. We saw Minnesota choke, uh, basically choke against uh, Buffalo, and then we saw TCU get it done against a uh, against a Texas A&M team in the New Heights Classic. So this game, it is a three-point favorite for TCU. We are looking specifically uh, for the barricade prop at Kane Chambers and Roscoe Cherry, the safety duo for TCU. Are they going to get over or under 15 and a half? And then for um, the over-under... I'm struggling to find this game and get those Bobanos in. What the heck? Where is where is this one? Rah! I am struggling. Probably because I'm colorblind. Alright, 53 and a half is the over-under. Oh yes, every JT Red White TD goes towards SFA Cares, uh, where we donate charity, I believe. Uh, we're all donating to the um Kirk Cousins Foundation, so that's a that's a big W. All right, so no mango here today. So top ten matchup here: TCU and Minnesota. Here we go. This is a banger. Remember, ineligible for game day because before week ten, we want to at least get twenty other twenty teams on stream, right? Um, we don't want to, you know. In, early days of the NCAA era we we kind of went to just the best game of the week and then we wound up seeing one team four or five times throughout the year and then we got to playoff time we didn't really see anybody so we want to be able to see everything going on in the SFA universe and definitely also it's a lot tougher to have to win sim games have to win barricade games and game day games throughout the season so a lot of parity obviously in the SFA so TCU JT Redwine Made it. This is a rematch of the CFP game from last season. It was the Cotton Bowl. It was a quarterfinal matchup. Minnesota got the better of TCU in that one. But it's a new look offense for Minnesota. New look offense for TCU as well, but they do return the quarterback. So as always, uh, he's not here. So we're going to go heads and kick. All right, and we're going to get TCU touchdown to start the day. Another TCU touchdown. Are they going to blow him out? 
Remember, this is Coach Rick taking over this roster, and this is honestly a little bit worse of a roster than in years past. It's 35 to zero to start the day. It's not this bad. We're in it. We're in TCF Bank Stadium as well. Oh, Rick, no, 42. Rick gets a field goal, 49. Oh, baby, JT Redwine just racking up the score. They finally get a touchdown. Unbelievable result here. TCU, they will probably be jumping ahead of some teams here in the rankings, potentially. 49 to 10. A massive result here for TCU. Sending a uh, sending a message to the rest of the country. 49-17 is your final from Minnesota. Tough game there for Minnesota here today. Obviously, uh, Rick, first year back, he is not taking a he is not um, he is not impacted this roster at all. And then uh, Cryo, let me know uh, how much is it per touchdown? Is he got one, two, three, four, five, six touchdown passes today? Two to Anthony Cross, and then they kind of took the fourth quarter off there. So JT Redwine, he had six touchdowns today. The SFA Player of the Year, maybe looking for a Heisman this year. Add to his collection of SFA rewards. Beautiful day here, and. <laughs> Man, and surprisingly, with all this passing, Peter Woods, the uh, the top target, only got two catches. A lot of pancakes. And now, now what I was waiting for, oh boy. All right. So tackles, tackles. This is part of my parlay. Kane Chambers and, uh, and Roscoe Cherry, three and two. Yes, the under hits. All right. So... Obviously, everything looked to be going around the line of scrimmage in this game, which is nice. So that under hits. Now I'm an Auburn uh, win away from turning a 1,000 coin five-leg parlay into 12K. That's massive for me. So all I need is an Auburn money line, baby. As we got James Roach with a sack. We got interception from all three SFA secondary guys. Kane Chambers, Dalen Barnes, Roscoe Cherry all getting involved. And oh boy, that might be the problem for... Coach Rick finding a new quarterback. Obviously, he lost Slade Roden. As now we'll check out what happened to Minnesota today as uh, Marcus Smith for interception day. He is in his Bishop Moore era, unfortunately, and that just doesn't win you games. As you got Tommy Mobley here, uh, over 100 yards. Jude Abraham, only three catches. Devin Hester, only three and then uh, you got Delvin Blizzard with eight tackles, SFA guy, TFLs, quite a few. Irby, no sacks for Irby today. Interceptions, obviously nothing. And, you know, this defense just didn't really put up much of a fight today, unfortunately. Uh, outside of uh, Freddie Funyon's SFA corner, clamping uh, Peter Woods. Nick, I gotta poke you. Yeah, you know, I just... I have a, you know, when you're on my schedule and I know that I'm probably going to lose that game and I know I'm probably going to face you in the playoff and get smoked again, and also I'm still salty over that Citrus Bowl. That that pain never goes away. Watching that clock stop at one second and you getting a free play on the goal line. Oh, man. Of course I'm a hater. I'm the ultimate hater. It's the, it comes with having the microphone. Yeah, this, this, sometimes the, the over-unders, obviously we use formulas, so sometimes they're off and you get a crazy game, right? So last game of the week is game day. That'll be coming up here shortly, but as is tradition to end the Bear Cave stream, we check out next week's game, week five here in the SFA. We got Auburn and Tennessee. This could be a great matchup for Bear Cave if Auburn continues to win. Virginia taking on ECU. Utah, Washington could be high-powered. That could be a game day game. Maryland, Ohio State is a banger. Buffalo, Notre Dame, that could have some high-powered high powered antics. A lot of fun matchups. Obviously, we have cut fully custom schedules now, so every week is always going to have a lot of great options as we continue to go down the line here. TCU taking on an impressive OK State team. That one will be a big-time game. Alabama taking on Arizona, an Arizona team that, that survived against Northern Illinois. Uh, Tulane taking on UTSA. Can they keep that dream season alive? Some big time storylines. North versus South Carolina. Can South Carolina shock the world? 
The Cyhawk game is even in here. My goodness, you love a good Cyhawk game. Pitt versus Clemson's a banger. Cincinnati versus Navy. Oh, baby. So that will do it here for the Bear Cave stream. As always, I'll be back in about five minutes. As always, guys, thanks for any of the follows, any of the subscriptions during the stream. Um, and VODs will be available later tonight. Highlights are always available tomorrow. And I'll be back in about five minutes with Auburn at Fresno State. Baby, it's going to be a big-time matchup. We'll see you in a second.